Emma glanced at her watch, the hands ticking closer to midnight. It was a moonless night, and a dense fog enveloped the small town. She and her friends, Sarah, Mark, and David, had spent the evening at a party in the outskirts of town. Now they were making their way back home, taking a dark, desolate road that cut through a dense forest. As they drove along the winding path, Emma couldn't shake off the feeling that they were being watched. Unease settled in her stomach, but she tried to ignore it, chalking it up to the eerie ambience of the night. Sarah sat next to her in the front seat, chatting away, while Mark and David laughed loudly in the back. But every now and then, Emma thought she heard faint footsteps echoing outside their car. I can't see anything through this fog, Sarah said, squinting as she tried to navigate the road. Emma tightened her grip on the steering wheel and glanced in the rearview mirror. In the distance, she caught a glimpse of a dim light, flickering like a distant star. She shook her head, attributing it to her imagination. However, as the light seemed to draw closer, her anxiety intensified. Guys, do you see that light behind us? Emma asked, her voice wavering. Mark and David turned their attention to the back window. Yeah, probably just another car, Mark replied dismissively. Emma tried to convince herself that Mark was right, but her instincts told her otherwise. The light grew brighter, and she noticed that it was moving erratically, as if it belonged to someone on foot. The footsteps she thought she had heard earlier seemed to grow louder now. Can we speed up a bit? Emma suggested, trying to keep her voice steady. Sarah complied, pressing on the gas pedal. The car lurched forward, and Emma hoped they could outrun whatever was behind them. But as the mysterious light closed in, she saw a shadowy figure emerge from the fog. Panic gripped her heart as she realized they were being followed by someone on foot. Go faster, Sarah, please, Emma pleaded. Sarah pushed the car to its limits, but the relentless figure persisted, drawing closer with each passing moment. The tension in the car was palpable, and fear hung heavy in the air. Who could be following us? David asked, his voice trembling. I don't know, but we need to find help, Emma said, trying to keep her composure. They spotted a flickering streetlight ahead and a small gas station adjacent to it. They decided to make a run for it, hoping they could find someone inside to help them. As they approached the station, the figure behind them disappeared into the darkness. Emma parked the car hastily, and the four friends rushed inside, their breaths labored from fear and exertion. The gas station attendant, an older man named Joe, looked up from a newspaper he was reading, surprised by their sudden entrance. Is everything okay, kids? Joe asked, concern etched on his face. Emma tried to catch her breath before speaking. There was someone following us on the road, and we got scared. Can you please call the police? Joe frowned and glanced outside. All right, let me check the security cameras first, then I'll call the police if necessary. While Joe reviewed the footage, Emma and her friends gathered near the counter, anxiously awaiting any sign of the mysterious pursuer. The gas station's fluorescent lights buzzed overhead, creating a harsh contrast with the darkness outside. After a few tense minutes, Joe called them over. Take a look at this, he said, pointing to the monitor. On the screen, they saw the figure of a man lurking in the shadows, obscured by the thick fog. He wore a tattered overcoat, and his face was hidden beneath a hat pulled low. He seemed to be wielding a long, sharp object but it was difficult to make out the details. Emma's heart pounded in her chest as she realized the danger they had narrowly escaped. Please call the police, Joe, she urged. Just as Joe picked up the phone, the lights in the gas station flickered and then went out. Darkness enveloped them, and the air grew tense with fear once again. What's happening? Sarah whispered, her voice barely audible. It's just a power outage, Joe said, trying to sound reassuring. I'll get the emergency generator running. He disappeared into the back room, and Emma felt a sinking feeling in her gut. The darkness outside seemed to have grown thicker, suffocating. She glanced at the window, half expecting to see the ominous figure standing there. 
The generator roared to life, casting a dim glow over the gas station. Just as Joe returned to the main area, they heard a loud crash from the back room. Emma's heart skipped a beat, and the group huddled closer together. Joe looked worried but determined. I'll go check what happened. Stay here, and I'll be right back. Before anyone could protest, Joe disappeared into the darkness. Minutes felt like an eternity, and the sense of impending danger only intensified. Emma clutched her phone tightly, ready to dial the police if needed. Suddenly, a blood-curdling scream echoed through the gas station. The friends exchanged terrified glances, unsure of what to do. We have to go help him, Mark said, his voice filled with urgency. Are you crazy? We don't know what's out there, David protested. Emma's mind raced, torn between the need to help Joe and the fear of encountering the menacing figure, but she couldn't abandon him. Gathering their courage, they cautiously made their way to the back room, where the scream had come from. As they rounded the corner, they were greeted by a grisly sight. Joe lay on the floor, unconscious, and a shattered vase lay nearby. The mysterious man had seemingly vanished again. We need to get out of here now, Emma said, panic rising in her voice. They rushed back to the front of the gas station, but the figure was nowhere to be seen. However, the car's headlights illuminated the dense fog outside, revealing the man standing just beyond the gas station's entrance. Fear paralyzed them as the man lifted his head, revealing a sinister smile hidden beneath his hat. Emma's heart sank as she realized this was far from over, and the night drive had turned into a terrifying fight for survival. The man took a step forward, his eyes locking with Emma's. His gaze was chilling, and she could feel a wave of malevolence emanating from him. They were trapped. The car was just outside the gas station, but so was their pursuer. Panic threatened to engulf them all. Stay back, Mark shouted, trying to sound brave, but his voice betrayed his fear. The man paid no heed to Mark's warning and continued to advance. With a trembling hand, Emma reached for her phone, ready to call the police. But before she could dial, the man lunged forward, knocking the phone out of her grasp. Come on, David exclaimed grabbing Emma's hand and pulling her towards the car. They ran as fast as they could, but the man seemed to effortlessly keep up with them, his footsteps echoing ominously. As they reached the car, Sarah fumbled with the keys, desperately trying to unlock the doors. Get in, get in, she yelled. The group piled into the car, and Emma slammed the door shut just as the man reached for the handle. He pressed his face against the window his eyes filled with a sinister glint. Go, go, drive, Mark shouted. Sarah turned the key in the ignition, and the engine roared to life. The tires screeched as she hit the gas, and they sped away from the gas station, leaving the man behind in the fog. They drove for what felt like an eternity, the tension in the car thick enough to suffocate. Emma kept glancing in the rearview mirror, half expecting to see the man's haunting silhouette following them again, but there was no sign of him. Let's head to the police station, David suggested. We need to report this. Nods of agreement circled the car, and Sarah changed course, heading towards the town's police station. Emma's hands were still shaking, and her heart continued to race as she recounted the terrifying events of the night to the officer on duty. The police took their report seriously, and dispatched several units to the gas station. But when they arrived, the man was gone, leaving no trace of his presence except for the shattered vase and Joe's unconscious body. Over the following days, the town was gripped by fear. Reports of a mysterious figure lurking in the fog circulated among the residents, leading to an unofficial curfew after dark. Emma, Sarah, Mark, and David couldn't escape the feeling of being constantly watched haunted by the man's unsettling smile. Despite the increased police presence, the man continued to elude capture. He seemed to appear and disappear like a ghost, leaving behind a trail of fear and anxiety. Emma and her friends, determined to take matters into their own hands, conducted their own investigation, digging into the town's history 
and recent disappearances. Their relentless pursuit of the truth brought them closer to the man's identity. They discovered that he was a former resident of the town, rumored to have vanished several years ago after a series of gruesome murders. As they connected the dots, they began to fear that he had returned for some twisted form of revenge. One evening, while coming through old newspaper articles in Emma's attic, they stumbled upon an unsettling revelation. The man's name was Samuel Collins, and he had been driven to madness by the tragic loss of his family in a car accident caused by a reckless driver. The accident had occurred on the same dark road where Emma and her friends had encountered him. Realizing the connection between their night drive and Samuel's past, Emma and her friends became convinced that they were his targets. They decided they needed to confront him before he struck again. Under the cover of darkness, they returned to the gas station, hoping to draw Samuel out. Armed with mace and flashlights, they waited, their hearts pounding in anticipation. Hours passed, and just as they were about to give up, they heard footsteps in the fog. There he is, Sarah whispered, her voice shaking. The group readied themselves, their hearts filled with a mix of fear and determination. Samuel emerged from the darkness, his haunting smile visible even from a distance. Emma stepped forward, her voice trembling but firm. Samuel, we know who you are and what happened to your family, but taking innocent lives won't bring them back. Please, let go of your anger. Samuel's eyes flickered with a mix of rage and sorrow. For a moment, it seemed as if he would attack, but then, to everyone's surprise, he lowered the weapon he was holding. You don't understand, Samuel said, his voice filled with pain. I've lost everything. I can't bear it anymore. Emma took a step closer, her heart going out to this tormented soul. We can help you find a way to cope with your pain. Killing won't bring you peace. It will only perpetuate the cycle of tragedy. For a moment, Samuel seemed to waver. But just as hope began to rise in Emma's chest, he turned and disappeared into the fog once again. As dawn broke, Emma and her friends made their way back home, knowing that their encounter with Samuel was far from over. They had touched the surface of his tortured psyche, but it would take more than one night to mend his shattered soul. In the days that followed, they continued their efforts to understand Samuel and reach out to him. Their community, once paralyzed by fear, came together to support them. The town's compassion and empathy became a powerful force against the darkness that had gripped them. Samuel remained at large, and the fear of encountering him lingered. But Emma and her friends refused to be consumed by terror. They had faced the night drive and the malevolent figure it had brought. And in doing so, they found the strength to confront their own fears and heal the wounds that ran deep. In the end, the night drive became a haunting memory, a reminder of the darkness that could lurk within any soul. But it also served as a testament to the resilience of the human spirit, the power of friendship, and the strength found in confronting one's deepest fears. Ashley had always been fascinated by the night. The darkness held a certain allure for her, a mixture of thrill and fear that excited her senses. One particular night, as the moon hung low, casting eerie shadows on the empty streets, Ashley found herself longing for an adventure. She decided to take a late night drive, seeking the unknown and craving the adrenaline that came with it. With the soft hum of the engine, Ashley drove her car through the deserted town, her eyes darting from side to side as she soaked in the eerie atmosphere. The familiar streets now seemed unfamiliar, and the shadows seemed to whisper secrets as she passed by. An inexplicable sense of foreboding settled in her gut, but she pushed it aside, attributing it to her overactive imagination. As Ashley turned onto a desolate road leading into the dense forest, her curiosity intensified. The towering trees formed a canopy over the road, blocking out the moonlight and enveloping her in darkness. The night sounds echoed, creating an ominous symphony of rustling leaves and distant howls. Her headlights caught fleeting glimpses of movement at the periphery of the forest, but each time she turned her head, there was nothing. 
She chided herself for being jittery and continued further into the woods. The road seemed to stretch on endlessly, and Ashley lost track of time. Suddenly, her headlights illuminated a figure standing in the middle of the road. She slammed on the brakes, heart pounding in her chest, and barely managed to avoid hitting the person. Stepping out of the car, Ashley's unease grew as she approached the figure. It was a disheveled man, with wild eyes and torn clothes. He seemed distressed and disoriented. Are you all right? Ashley asked with caution. A man's voice trembled as he spoke. I, I need help. My car broke down, and my phone has no signal. Can you give me a ride to the nearest town? Though hesitant, Ashley couldn't leave the man stranded in the middle of nowhere. She agreed to give him a lift, and he got into the back seat. As they drove on, he became increasingly agitated, his eyes darting around as if searching for something. In the rearview mirror, Ashley caught a glimpse of a tattoo on the man's wrist, an intricate symbol that sent a shiver down her spine. She recalled reading about a local cult that practiced dark rituals in these very woods. Trying to remain calm, she asked him where he needed to be dropped off. The man replied, just up ahead, take the next turn to the right. Ashley obliged, and they turned onto an even narrower, hidden path. Her instincts screamed at her to turn back, but she couldn't ignore the man's plea for help. The path led to an isolated clearing, surrounded by more eerie trees. As the car came to a stop, the man suddenly lunged at Ashley, his intention sinister. Reacting quickly, Ashley managed to fend off the man's attack, but not without sustaining a scratch on her arm. Panic surged through her veins as she realized the danger she was in. She had to get out of there, but her car wouldn't start. It was as if the forest itself was conspiring against her. Get out of the car now. She commanded the man, her voice trembling with fear and authority. He complied, but there was a sinister grin on his face that sent chills down her spine. The clearing seemed to come alive with haunting whispers that echoed through the night. Ashley's heart pounded in her chest as she tried to think of a plan. In the dim moonlight, she saw something glinting on the forest floor. It was a pocket knife that must have fallen from the man's belongings during the struggle. She kept her eyes on the man, inching closer to the knife, all the while trying to maintain a facade of courage. The man seemed to be enjoying the fear he instilled in her, his eyes never leaving her. She finally reached the knife, and with a swift motion, she grabbed it and held it tightly in her trembling hand. Stay back. I won't hesitate to use this, she warned brandishing the knife in front of her. The man's grin wavered, but he didn't seem deterred. Instead, he began to chant in a strange language, and Ashley felt a surge of dizziness wash over her. With all her strength, she fought to stay focused, to resist the strange enchantment that seemed to cloud her mind. What do you want from me? She demanded, trying to keep her voice steady. The man's sinister smile returned. You have something we need, he hissed, the blood of an innocent. It holds great power, and you, my dear, have just given us a taste of it. Ashley's mind raced, trying to understand what he meant. She recalled the scratch on her arm. Could her blood really hold some dark power? It all seemed like a nightmare, but she knew she had to escape before things got even worse. Summoning every ounce of courage, she lunged at the man slashing the knife in his direction. He dodged the attack, but it bought her enough time to make a run for it. Ashley sprinted back to her car, her heart pounding in her ears, and managed to start the engine just in time. The man pursued her, his enraged screams echoing through the night. As she drove back onto the main road, Ashley realized she had stumbled into something far more sinister than she could have ever imagined. The cult in the woods was real, and they were after her blood. But why? And what did they plan to do with it? As she raced through the darkened streets, she couldn't shake the feeling that she was being watched, that they were still following her. Her mind raced with questions and fear, but she knew she couldn't go to the police. Who would believe such a bizarre tale? Determined to unravel the mystery and protect herself, Ashley decided to dig deeper into the cult's history. She researched local folklore, 
missing persons cases, and anything remotely related to the occult. Each piece of information she uncovered only deepened the darkness of the secrets hidden in the woods. The more she learned, the more she realized that she couldn't face this danger alone. She needed help, someone who would believe her, someone she could trust. She thought of her best friend, Alex, a skeptic yet open-minded enough to listen. With her heart pounding, Ashley called Alex, recounting the night's terrifying events and the looming threat she faced. To her relief, Alex didn't dismiss her claims as pure imagination. Instead, Alex decided to meet her right away to discuss the situation further. As Ashley waited anxiously in a dimly lit cafe, she couldn't help but replay the night's events in her mind. The dark forest, the strange man, the eerie chants, it all felt like a nightmare she couldn't wake up from. She was grateful to have Alex by her side, someone who believed her and was willing to help. When Alex arrived, she looked concerned and determined. She had brought along a journal she found in her late grandmother's belongings, containing information about local legends and folklore. Together, they pieced together the disturbing history of the cult that operated in the woods for generations. According to the journal, the cult believed in ancient rituals that required the blood of an innocent to unleash dark powers. They had been long rumored to be involved in unsolved disappearances and mysterious deaths, but no concrete evidence had ever been found. Ashley and Alex knew that the cult wouldn't stop until they had what they sought from her, her blood. They had to find a way to protect themselves and put an end to the dark threat that loomed over the town. With determination in their hearts, they devised a plan to expose the cult and gather evidence that would lead to their downfall. Alex, being a tech-savvy individual, set up surveillance equipment around the area where Ashley encountered the man. They also discreetly sought help from a few trusted friends who were skilled in self-defense. Over the following nights, they kept a vigilant watch. The cult's members were cunning and elusive, but Ashley and Alex were determined not to let fear consume them. They managed to capture incriminating footage of the cult's rituals and identified key members involved. Armed with the evidence, they went to the police, and although it was difficult to convince the authorities, the undeniable proof they presented forced them to take action. Raids were conducted on the cult's hideout, leading to the arrest of several members. However, their efforts had only scratched the surface of the cult's power. They discovered that its roots ran deep, with influential individuals protecting the dark secrets. The threats against Ashley and Alex intensified as they delved deeper into the investigation. With their lives at risk, Ashley and Alex knew they had to confront the cult's leader directly. Armed with the knowledge they had gathered and a determination to stop the sinister practices, they confronted the leader in a tense and dramatic confrontation. In the end, it was not just bravery but the power of truth and unity that prevailed. The leader's secrets were laid bare and the cult's hold over the town began to crumble. The police, no longer able to turn a blind eye, launched a full-scale investigation, leading to the arrest of more cult members, including the leader himself. The nightmare had come to an end, but the impact of that terrifying night would forever linger in Ashley's mind. She had faced true darkness, and it had changed her. Yet, she also discovered the strength she never knew she had and the importance of having someone to rely on in the face of the unknown. Ashley and Alex became inseparable friends, bonded by the harrowing experience that had brought them together. They vowed to watch out for each other, no matter what the future held. As the years passed, the town began to heal from the wounds inflicted by the cult. The darkness that once haunted the woods started to dissipate, and the night held less fear for Ashley. However, she never forgot the night drive that changed her life forever.